typically blind individuals don't drive cars. Oh gosh. And they don't You cross. guys don't drive and they a don't, car and the bird box challenge. They don't That's cross foolish. intersections or do things unsafely. It's very difficult and it takes years of training to be able to do to something like that. To do it safely, like to do it alone, safely and, correctly. and potentially uh, even with a guide dog uh, or a cane, it takes many, many, many uh, months, years of perfection and experience to do that. Are you taking a break? I am. I didn't want to run out of gas on my uh, snowblower halfway up the driveway, so I'm going to let it uh, cool down and uh, then I can fill it up. But we're, we have we have uh, an escape route now. Okay. But we can get out all the way out of the neighborhood, so I did the neighborhood uh, pipe stem as well. So once again, we got a little bit more snow than what we bargained for. We did. This is our second snowstorm. Our first one was uh, in early November, and we have a, a video on that somewhere out there. <laughs> which one. Watch, we'll link to watch that the novice, the novice the YouTubers novice trying YouTubers. to figure out where the, where the link. car is. I think yeah. it might be there, but I'm not going to put my life on it. It could be there. You so. guys, we're going to get better at this, I promise. We are going to try to get better. Yeah, because it is way too much fun. So but, um, uh, so I did uh, use my snow plow. I haven't used it in two years because last year we didn't need it. I am very surprised that it started because I fully expected that to be today's excuse and issue. Ah, uh, yeah. And uh, well, I bought two years ago, I bought a new snowblower because we needed one. Had, had we had our old one was 17 years old and it was dead. So I bought this one and this one has the electric cord plug thing. So it has an electric starter. So you just plug it into the wall so you don't have to pull and pull and pull. And uh, I had emptied it out of gas. So uh, I just filled up gas, plugged it in, started it up and it worked, uh, worked great. Okay. So, we'll finish it up a little bit later, but it's yeah. supposed to keep snowing, they say, all the way till midnight. I know. So, so much for two to five inches. We ended up getting probably six to eight, and they're expecting more more tonight. And it's not going to end till midnight, but uh, we should be able to get in and out. So, I mean, you can come in the house now. Okay, I will. I took off all my winter outer gear. So, here's a question for you. Yeah. Why then did you not just blindfold yourself and snow blow as part of the bird box challenge, I wonder? Oh, well, I could have done that, I think. Um, uh, I'm being very facetious I in know. my questioning. I know that. Um, well, because... Should we go sit down and have a little chat about yeah, this? Yeah, let's chat about that. All right, let's do it. Okay. So, Daddy Dude. Yes. Bird Box Challenge. This is an open question. Um, it's popular right now that uh, there's a lot of uh, YouTubers and other people out there doing um, Bird Box Challenges. And uh, if we you're get not, it. Yeah, if you're not familiar with that, uh, you're probably living under a rock or something because it's pretty popular. There's a there's a uh, there's a movie out. Uh, called Bird Box, and uh, we uh, honestly we haven't seen the movie. Um, we are not we don't see a lot of movies anyway, and it doesn't um, really fit into our uh, genre of what we would typically be interested in seeing anyhow. But right. we're not into thrillers but so much. That's but. not you know. Uh, so the fact that we don't go see the movie isn't anything indicative of or unique to uh, the Bird Box. Um, but just in general, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't. We just really don't have stuff. time. Yeah, it's a, yeah, movies are, are, are something that we don't do. We have six blind children that, you know, watch movies in our, in our, uh, you know, in our basement with, the, you know, with the projector off. So they just. <laughs> they, we, say, they, we say bulbs that way. We say but... <laughs> bulbs. Uh, and, and yet uh, they enjoy it and they have their favorite shows. And uh, they have their favorite things on TV and, uh, and you know, and, and, and on films, and they can do that as well. But there's a lot of discussion right now, especially in the blind community, about the Bird Box Challenge. And I think that anything that really brings awareness 
to uh, blindness and disabilities is generally a good thing? Well, we understand that people are not doing the challenge to for that purpose. We understand that all they're doing is just getting um, in on some pop culture fun, yeah. you know, and that sort of thing. And, and really all it has done in our world has kind of caused us to stop and think about a few things. Uh, we know that it's not for the purpose of, like I said, trying to, to pretend to be blind for the sake of pretending to be blind or anything, and that it is just this challenge created by the movie Culture. However, right. So uh, a, a couple of things. We're um, you know, we have our children were all six of them were born blind, so they have an experience of blindness that is different than um, uh, those who have gone through uh, sight loss or have vision impairment with some uh, vision. The blindfold aspect of uh, putting a blindfold on, for example, is, a, is an example of someone, and possibly it could be a representation of someone losing their sight right suddenly. away. Suddenly. And, because uh, you're, you're experiencing that situation from the perspective and um, just from the perspective um, of a fully, sight, of of a a sighted, fully sighted, person. sighted person. Now, um, and, and in order, and, and when you blind... That's when, your frame of reference. Your frame of reference is a visual uh, learned experience based on vision. Vision has impressed upon you a, a graph or map of the world as you see it. And so that when the blindfold goes on, your brain still can fill in a lot of gaps about what things look like, what color they are, how far they are, what distance they are, those kinds of, those kinds of things. Now, typically blind individuals don't drive cars. Oh gosh. And they don't You cross. guys don't drive and they a don't, car and the bird box challenge. They don't That's cross foolish. intersections or do things unsafely. It's very difficult and it takes years of training to be able to do to something do it safely, like that, to do alone, it safely and correct. And potentially, uh, even with a guide dog uh, or a cane, it takes many, many, many uh, months, years of perfection and experience to do that. Um, we put up a, a video a few, a, a few months ago about Martha, our blind hairstylist, and the link is going to be on one of those sides, <laughs> but where all of the girls and mom got their hair cut by a, a stylist, a hairstylist who had been um, who had been a hairstylist for 22 years, but only blind for 13 years, and she went to rehabilitation and to our state uh, program and lived on campus in Richmond for six months or even longer to learn how to be blind, how to operate in the world as a blind person. She already knew how to cut hair. She knew how to cut hair and she had still had the visual reference of what things look like and how the perception of how you can be safe, how you can, you know, do certain things. In fact she things. still has that same frame of reference today. She does. She never lost it. But when the a blindfold um, to a sighted person does not mimic blindness. No, it just, it shows you for a moment what it's like to lose your sight, but it does not show you accurately or give you an accurate idea about what it is like to truly be blind. Right. One of the things that we're, um, we're always concerned about is that visually impaired individuals, whether they have a, a guide dog or whether they're traveling with a white cane, that the public has an awareness that a person has a visual disability or a blind a blindness, and they the blind cane the cane and the do dog is not only for their benefit, but it's for the benefit of the community to at identify large, the person to identify that person as a visually impaired person or a person that needs additional assistance and is watching out for their own safety. Now here's a question for you: What happens? 
when I should probably, we should probably both be on the camera, but you know, this is how we're doing it today. So what happens when someone in the general population, for example, and this is just food for thought. We're not here to lecture, scold mom or anything else. It's just food for thought. What happens when someone in the general population sees an individual out in public who is um, participating in this challenge, for example, and they're trying um, or they appear to possibly be blind, what happens when my children or another blind individual then goes out into public? Do you think it's possible that other people might mistakenly think that they're just participating in this challenge? Because to be honest, we are fighting the battle every day of awareness of people understanding the cane. I can't even begin to tell you guys how many canes have been broken by people who in the in the shopping malls jump over the cane, snap them in two in crowded hallways. Right. In a how line hard it is just to get the kids across a parking lot. You know, um, people are just, you know, and we all do it. We get busy and wrapped up in our own minds and our own agendas and our own things that we have to do in that in that time. And, and so the awareness, boy, it's tough. And, and the other thing too is there's a lot of discussion. I mean, there's actually people who have approached us and other individuals in the community thinking that we're faking for some I don't know reason. I don't right. know why they would think that a person would want to fake right. that, but but it, it actually is a thing. Yeah. Also, um, some people who have visual impairment don't necessarily look blind. There are yeah, a right. lot of people that have invisible disabilities and impairments that um, they that look you, pretty typical. They look they look typical. And so, you know, without getting into stereotypical what someone is supposed to look like, um, these are areas that I think that the bird box challenge as one thing is, 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 it's not raising awareness for anything other than a movie. No, and it's in, potentially in harmful because, you know, I'm afraid that it's going to take us back to the place where people start to pity. Yeah. People who are blind and vision impaired. Or, or only look at that person as who has a vis uh, disability as a hero only right. if they can function at a point that's that's productive for the general exactly. public. Exactly, because you know, large. and we get this all the time. People say, "Well, I don't know how you do it," or "I don't know how the kids do it," and there is this perception of superheroism that is so wrong. I mean. You know, and, and it's kind of, it's kind of um, insulting, really, when someone would look at a blind individual and think, oh, it's so hard for you to, you know, do the most mundane, simple tasks such as grooming or food preparation or whatever, because it was difficult for them right. in this challenge. Right. And I and, think one of the things, too, that we need to, you know, be aware of is that our, our the disabled people in our community and those who are blind, uh, one of the things that we're trying to do on our channel is to just show, show uh, our kids who are blind do everyday things, whether it's uh, changing a light bulb, which there might be a link here or here <laughs> with David changing a light bulb or going across campus or going traveling at uh, Costco across, uh, you know, a busy exactly. area. So one of the things we're trying to, or go to an overlook, a scenic overlook. One of the things we're trying to do is normalize these conditions so that people aren't caught off guard that you run into a blind or a quadriplegic or you some know, other You know, and see, this is the thing, uh, like with person. me and what I struggle with on YouTube, because I, you know, on, on Chris's video, the initial video that was done on our family, and we'll have to link that one too, to SBSK, I had said, we're just a family. We're a mom and a dad and kids, and I truly do see us as being just a typical family who happens to be living with a little extra something something here on a daily basis right. but but really the things that we do and the activities and and the fun and the love and the way we interact with each other is pretty typical i think right um i 
I could be wrong about that, but you know, I I do think that it's we do um, things differently. We do like, things differently, like and said. and I, I we understand that we don't look typical to you know when we go out to dinner and that sort of thing, and we get the stares and the looks. But but it just the bird box challenge, you know, kind of bringing us back to that, really does um, it does concern us. From that perspective now another thing that I've been thinking of it's like you know and again I we're not party poopers you guys know we're not party poopers by any stretch we like to have fun just like the next guy but I've been wondering like you know think about this for a minute would you ever consider participating in a challenge that was causing you to mimic a person with say an intellectual disability for example I mean, that would be socially unacceptable and inappropriate, and in my opinion. I've, right. You know, we're living with that as well. And it, where do you draw the line? I mean, why right. is it... Or a it, person who is deaf or has a physical right. disability. Why All is it okay those, to... Why is, would it be, it be okay to mimic or try to make yourself look like or act like a person with a disability? I don't know. I mean, it's just food for thought. You know, yeah. we're not we're not the kind of people that would ever hold anything against someone for doing it. Certainly, you know? we're not film critics. No, we're not. And you know, and we're not we're not really advocates or teachers or anything like that. I mean, we're just having a discussion here. But but it just it does bring you know to to the forefront food for thought. That's all. And the, you know, the other thing that I don't hear a whole lot of discussion of, and I guess because we are in this vision community, that's what we're hearing for the most part. But from my perspective, what really disturbed me the most about the movie, I mean, it goes back to the movie and not the challenge per se, but but this business of mental illness and I mean, the movie, you know, it, it seems to me that it kind of sensationalizes and stigmatizes mental illness in a way. It's horrible. It, it, you know, and the reviews that I've read, I mean, it's one thing to avoid, you know, the demons out there. And I think people who are living with mental illness have to deal with this every day. That's what it is. And for example, there are characters in the movie who are depicted as actually having mental illness. And what happens in the movie is that they become the villains themselves. And and I think that that's a real misconception that a lot of people in in general do have of people with mental illness which is just not the case and the truth of the matter is is that more often than not they themselves become victims and so i just think that these things i think you need to be careful about who goes to see the movie if you um if you know as parents and loved ones of individuals who deal with these things it could cause a trigger in them um, it's the other thing, you know, that we went through with David, which is, which I think is sort of common with younger kids who are blind is trying to distinguish between, um, fact and fiction, right? Right. And Reality and fantasy. It's right. a very abstract thing. In fact, we had to, when David was in sixth grade, he had such a problem, you know, he's so, he's so intelligent and he loves to read. And he had so much trouble distinguishing between fact and fiction that we had to speak, talk to the teachers. And for an entire year, and I think even it went into two years, we only allowed David to read nonfiction material until we were more confident you know, that, that he could understand and recognize the difference. Exactly. And when you're reading about it as a blind person, you've never seen certain things. So uh, when you're reading about, and if you don't know that what you're writing, what what's, you know, even in a fiction story, there are real things. And so it's part of the challenge of writing um, and part of the challenge of understanding and comprehension is trying to figure out that. And without, again, a visual frame of reference and an understanding of what's real, what's not real, what's possible, how fast does a plane go? How, how, how do you know, as a person who's never seen a plane, don't even know what a plane looks like? There, yeah, how, you have to how experience can you imagine things. what 
speed is or other light, how f light travels or how things move between walls or how you can see. You know, a lot of blind people don't know that people can see them in a car children, because of the window. Children, when you're training when children you learn, or people who are, you know, children. You mostly. do learn those things. Of I course. think a real good recommendation came from Sam from The Blind Life who had a really terrific um, um, uh, video about his perception with uh, and there's with a the discussion that we we, we all had a got discussion into in there. the comments there but one of the suggestions he made which is really a great one i think is go you, the blind challenge he calls it the blind challenge is go and meet and spend some time with a blind person or go see a movie with a blind person or go to dinner and if you don't yeah. know a blind person Find one. one. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Go find a blind person that you can experience a little bit more of their lives and how they interact with. And with if you people. want to do the challenge, at least you know try to do it with them, or you know find a find a mobility instructor or TVI at your school or something like that, and maybe ask them about it. You know what their perception is on right. that, and. You know, maybe they'll do it with you or something. Or don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything that's going to cause you harm. Did you see the news story about the young girl who I crashed did. her car? Right. Or, you know, let's be real, her mom and dad's car. And she's really, I, I'm thankful she's very lucky that she didn't kill herself or someone else. Blind in people the don't drive. That's not real smart, folks. Right. So That's just, smart. you know, think. Use your brains, okay? We love everybody. We do, and we're not lecturing, okay? Try lecturing. to understand we're not lecturing. We, just having a conversation. We like to have fun, you know. We, we like to engage in, you know, we, we have more blind jokes than most. And Now, there's a difference between laughing at yourself and your situation as opposed to laughing at someone else just because. I there know. are differences. Maybe we'll get into that at another time. And there's also a difference between blind jokes and playing tricks on someone who's blind. Yes, which okay? is cruel. So that's cruel. Which is cruel. And we don't do things like that. But If you have comments or questions or thoughts about the Bird Box Challenge, um, or you know maybe something, if you're visually impaired, how does that affect you? Um, please put in the comments below. We're happy yeah, to discuss that. Yeah, let's talk that. about it some more. All of us can talk with each other. You don't have to wait for us to comment on your comment. Uh, you know, our, our subscribers are family to us. And, you know, all of you can have a communication. Just keep it kind. Keep it nice. Keep it upbeat. Sure. And, um, you know, we would love to have your, um, you know, your thoughts on this as well. So if you like this video or any of our other, <laughs> we're supposed to say we this do. stuff. We're supposed to say like, like subscribe, subscribe, share, leave a comment, all that um, stuff. We we're, don't talk to the camera oh a lot. Gosh. We don't talk. Can we you don't tell how awkward camera. this is for and us? We normally just uh, live our lives and have you guys have it take a peek at what we do every day. But um, we it's do awkward love you. for us. But we we're having fun and. We'll and we going. appreciate all of you. Our subscriber count keeps going up, which is, you know, That's we thought great. if just one person would get something out of this, it'd be, you know, uh, beneficial. And we've had so much uh, appreciation and your uh, support and comments. We, we, we never thought that it could be like this. You guys and really and truly do encourage us. This, this is kind of hard sometimes, and there are a lot of challenges. You know, even, even trying to film the family it's yeah. it's difficult you know we we do want to let the rope out a little bit more i suppose you could call yeah. it that by showing you more of the challenges and things but we do want to maintain the kids dignity and yep. and our own dignity and you know and and we don't i don't know it's it's very very awkward for us right. but and our, we're we'll not youtubers there. we don't have a studio well, we are youtubers well, now i hate to tell you but what i'm saying is we don't have a, we don't have cameras and tripods and lighting set up in our home and no. everywhere we go or in our car like a lot of folks do and we'll get um, there we will get there, but um, you know the 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 point is that we're we're not filming every day. We're not. Well, you filming. work full time for people I who don't understand time. that. I have a full time job, and you do too. And not with well six, uh, with six kids, um, you know that need a lot of care, and some of our kids have 
have additional and invisible disabilities and, um, you know, which we talk about sometimes. Yeah, we'll get more into that stuff. Again, you know, each one of them is unique and loved as an individual and they all have just amazing personalities that we hope you guys have seen and... um, you know, every one of you has uh, has a favorite. Some people are saying that uh, <laughs> their favorite, you know, moves. Every time a new video comes out, they like somebody else different. Or, or... You know, and I think that's kind of cool for the kids, yeah. actually. And I always tell them, oh, so-and-so, you know, this subscriber, you're their favorite. And, you know, you see these big grins on their yeah. faces. I think the kids really enjoy that. And, and there's nothing they wrong do. with that. And, and, you know, you guys are a, um, a reflection when you put in comments um uh, that's their they're reading your comments they Sometime, see them. well bethany does bethany sometimes and the David other kids does and well, yeah. uh, we read them to you know some of the other we do kids. read them to them more and we often let than them, not and we let them know but but the point is your message does get to them and your your care and your love and your and love your, yeah and your and your encouragement uh, and your laughter gets back to them and it gets back to us and we're just happy to be able to Make a little uh, smile in your day if we can. So that's it for today's video. Uh, We don't do that either. Dad's got to edit all these videos. So he's like, all right, enough already. Enough of this already. And um, so we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thanks, guys. Love you all. Bye. Bye.